Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for this is, if you haven't noticed, this is a historic occasion. Uh, I am really proud to be here today with this great assemblage of leaders to sign real and meaningful pension reform that is fair to workers and it's fair to the taxpayers of Pennsylvania. Give yourselves a round of applause. This is a real, this is a significant achievement for everyone who has worked on this issue, and I couldn't be prouder to be here with Republicans and Democrats, members of the Senate, members of the House, to take this final step in this long, how many years, process to get real meaningful pension reform. Before I start, I just want to make a special, uh, especially acknowledge a few people who have done a lot, especially Senator Corman. Senator Corman, and you'll hear from him in a minute, but, but we have worked, tire he has worked tirelessly, and I think we've worked together uh, in an effort to get this across the finish line, and I want to thank you for your hard work. <laughs> Naturally, I also want to thank Senator Scarnati, President Pro Tem of the Senate, Senator Pat Brown, Chairman of the Appropriations Committee. We're, there you are, okay. Uh, of the Senate Appropriations Committee, Senator Costa, Leader Costa, Speaker Terzai, Representative Reed, Representative Dermody, and so many others who are back here. Because today is yet another example of how we can work across party lines. Here in Harrisburg, we can get important things done uh, in a way that I think a lot of other places cannot. Just go over some of the, the history. Together, we legalized medical marijuana. We continue to battle the opioid epidemic in Pennsylvania. We've passed liquor reform. We've invested in our schools in a fair and equitable way. And the common thread that runs through all these things and all these successes is not just that we have changed policy, but that we've done this, we've worked hard, but we've done this in a way that, that really does the best for the citizens of Pennsylvania, all of us, wherever we come from, Whoever we serve, whichever party we attach ourselves to, we've all worked here, and this is another example of that for the people of Pennsylvania. And now we can add to that list of things I just mentioned one really big issue, and that's meaningful pension reform. Senate Bill, one's make, Senate Bill 1 makes significant changes to Pennsylvania's retirement system while also protecting the benefits that our employees will earn over years of hard work. It reduces Wall Street fees so that more money stays in the pockets of Pennsylvania's rather than on Wall Street managers' pockets. It shifts unnecessary risk away from the taxpayer. It introduces a new, full, defined contribution 401k style plan for our new employees, an option for new employees just like the private sector. And it could save, depending on what happens or how you value that risk shift, could save over $10 billion for Pennsylvanians' taxpayers over what we had in our uh, uh, old system and what now exists in our unfunded liability. And let's be clear, this plan addresses our liability in the only real and responsible way po possible by changing the structure of pension benefits. The fact is we cannot accelerate the shrinking of our liability on the backs of our current employees, and this bill recognizes that in a real concrete way. Even eliminating future pension benefits altogether would not change the reality that the only way to more significantly reduce our current debt is to do what this General Assembly and the then Governor uh, agreed to do back in 2010, and that is to pay our bills every year on time. Simply put, this bill is a win for Pennsylvania taxpayers. It's also fair to Pennsylvania's workforce, and I will be proud to sign it in just a few minutes. But first, I'd like to turn this over again to the person I think gets a huge credit for making this possible, and that's Majority Leader Senator Jake Corman. Senator Corman. Thank you, Governor. As I was driving here today, I said I feel sort of like a Cubs fan. You know, for 100 years, their whole identity was never winning the World Series, and, and now they've won one. Uh, they don't really have an identity anymore. And, for years, also, all I've been talking about is pension reform, so I'm not sure what I'm going to talk about tomorrow, but uh, I guess as a politician, I'll come up with something at some point. Uh, just a few thank yous. Um, first, Governor, um, you know, I was critical last year when we didn't get this done. I want to give the proper accolades to you. Uh, I know uh, this has been a difficult issue, 
Uh, your chief of staff, as I said on the floor, Mike Brunel, looked me in the eye a year, you know, six months ago and said, I promise you this is a priority for the governor, and it was a priority, and we would not be here without you. So, Governor, thank you so much for all your hard work. Uh, Leader Reid, everyone's behind me, not to my side of me. Uh, Speaker Terzai and the whole House Republicans. Uh, you know, Dave and I have met twice now in Altoona at the uh, Champ Sports Bar and Grill for lunch. Uh, to, to, to uh, talk about big issues. One was the 16, uh, 2016 budget stalemate, and just a few months ago was about pension reform. And both times we came up with a plan uh, that brought us to completion. So I'm not sure what you're doing tomorrow, but maybe we should uh, head there. But uh, you know, Dave uh, said he was absolutely committed to getting this done, and he certainly was a man of his word and, and made it happen. Uh, to some of the organizations, uh, private organizations like the Pennsylvania State Chamber, Allegheny Conference, Philadelphia Chamber of Commerce, Pew Charitable Trust, Commonwealth Foundation, and all the other groups that weighed in, that said, you know, identified this as the number one problem in Pennsylvania that had to be resolved and was unwavering in their commitment to resolving it in a, in a uh, true fashion. And so I thank them for all their support. Uh, anyone that tries to draw up pieces of legislation like this knows that it takes tremendous staff work to do that. I want to thank all the, the staff of uh, both my leader's office and appropriations staff. Uh, for tremendous work, uh, particularly want to point out uh, my legislative director, Scott Sikorsky, who, as I said on the floor, was six feet tall, had a full head of hair, and none of it was gray when this issue started. Uh, but uh, no one can match Scott's work ethic, and so we wouldn't be here without all that great work. And I want, mostly want to comment about the 34 Senate Republican members of our caucus. Now, three years ago, you elected me leader, and we identified this as by far the number one issue facing Pennsylvania. And any time you're dealing with uh, retirement issues, it's sensitive, difficult issues to, to address. Uh, not only were you courageous in your vote, you were demanding that we take those votes because we had to address the issue and there was no way to get around it, so we had to take it on full steam. You are the true heroes of this legislation, and I thank you all for being strong in your support uh, of this legislation. Finally, just let me mention this. Uh, since this final compromise was unveiled, uh, our friends in the fourth estate have given us somewhat of a, I would say, at least a tepid response. Uh, I guess that's the, by nature uh, the media's job to be critical of what goes on in Harrisburg. And I know this legislation doesn't address everything. Uh, we still have challenges in front of us, particularly dealing with the unfunded liability. But as the governor mentioned, this isn't Harrisburg, or this isn't D.C., this is Harrisburg. You know, we could all stand in our ideological purity, go to our corners, introduce legislation, and never get anything done where we could come together as a General Assembly and try to fix the problems of Pennsylvania. Understand, most of these members here in this General Assembly, you know, they didn't create this problem. They inherited it. You know, they weren't here in 2001. They weren't here in 2003. They weren't, certainly weren't responsible for the, for the Great Recession of 2008. But despite all that, they were unwavering in their support to get this done and demanding that we get this done. And so today is a, is a historic day that, yes, we still have challenges in front of us, we still have, you know, we've gone through a lot of difficult challenges in the past, but because of this legislation, we removed 60 percent of the risk off the backs of the taxpayers. Which what we're saying to the people of Pennsylvania is this. We have challenges in front of us, but because of this legislation, this will never, ever happen again in Pennsylvania. And in the immortal words of Joe Biden, and I'll paraphrase, this is a big deal. Thank you very much. Let me introduce uh, good friend, Speaker Mike Terzai. Governor, Senator Corman, it's great to follow you. I know we have many other uh, leaders uh, to, to follow me. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm so excited about this date. Jake Corman, the Senate Majority Leader, thank you for your leadership. Dave Reed, right here, thank you for your leadership. These uh, two individuals, amongst others, really work so diligently to make sure all of um, all the members of the legislature, along with the governor's office, were on board to get this done. I saw the work firsthand that our majority leader, Dave Reed, was doing day in and day out, and I knew what Jay Corman had been doing. Um, throughout the Commonwealth and working with Dave, and to be able to put the coalition together to deliver this meaningful piece of legislation. I applaud that great work from a legislative 
uh, perspective. And Governor, we are honored that you are here to sign this legislation with us today and, and uh, with Republicans and Democrats voting in favor of this, uh, this legislation. I want to just say this about the bill, and I, I do have to do some other thank yous that I think are crucial at a, at a historic moment like this. But to the, my colleagues in the General Assembly, uh, for all of you who have been steadfast on the, on the Senate side and the House side in getting us meaningful pension reform, congratulations and thank you. It marks a historic point in Pennsylvania government. We are moving to a defined contribution plan for new hires in the public sector state employees and school employees. The private sector has been in the defined contribution space for some time now. But from our understanding, only four states have done anything to move to defined contribution space for new hires. And for many of them, it's just state employees. Pennsylvania is ahead of the curve and is making sure to save the system for existing employees and retirees we are saving them. We are protecting future taxpayers. And here's the thing, folks. These are still competitive benefits with respect to other states or with respect to the private sector for new hires. All of that done in Senate Bill 1. I also want you to know this, because I sometimes hear about, oh, this isn't addressing the unfunded liability. Folks, this group of folks have been addressing the unfunded liability for quite some time. Let me just tell you that back in 2007 and 2008, the contribution to the system was around $570 million. In this upcoming budget, just since 7-8, we are now reaching $4.3 billion in contributions to SIRS and PSERS, and we haven't missed a payment. Senator Scarnani and I have been out front along with our leaders and our colleagues, we haven't missed a single payment. And it's gone up from 500 some million to $4.3 billion. Folks, we're taking on the unfunded liability. We're, we're near the actuarially required contribution. And this product, this is a product of work spanning several legislative sessions. I have to point out some individuals because I think that they're so crucial on the House side. Representative Tobash, Representative Camp, former Representative Chris Ross, day in and day out working to get to a solution. Yes, they wanted to define contribution for all new hires, but this bill is so significant in its shift that to be able to get the coalition 143 votes in the House under Dave's leadership, Dave Reed's leadership, just outstanding work, just outstanding work. In addition, I just want to say this, um, to know that that Governor Corbett and Lieutenant Governor Cawley put in so much effort, and they worked hard on this. And I'm so glad that Governor, Governor Wolf is picking up where, where they left off. We didn't get it over to the goal line at that time. We grew, grew our majorities, and we also got folks like my good friend, Representative Harry Richa, on board to, to put together a coalition. This is, this is just people deserve uh, thanks for the great work that they have done. So many of these new members ran on this issue and said, we got to get it done. And, and they were behind us. They supported us. They were, they were so supportive of, um, of uh, Leader uh, Corman and Leader Reed and, 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 and energetic about, about getting that across the goal line. I have to applaud each and every one of them. It's an honor to be with them. Folks, the main thing that I know is this. I see my neighbors. I know how hard they're working. And they are supportive of, uh, of a great school system. They are. They're great supporters of a good state system delivering service. But they would be paying taxes and they would say, like, I'm in a defined contribution plan. When, when are you guys getting there? And I got to tell you, I think that's the most important accomplishment um, that Senate Bill 1 achieves. It lets the, the taxpayers know, the hardworking citizens know, folks, we're moving into the direction that the private sector is for some period of time, and we got it done. To this great group, thank you so much. And Dave, I got to tell you, Dave, I, my hat's off to you and Jake. I think your leadership has just been outstanding, and I am so appreciative. Thank you. My, my good friend from Allegheny County, Senator Jay Costa. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the opportunity to be here. I want to thank all my colleagues uh, who are participating in today's, this afternoon's 
Uh, very pretty significant event that's taking place here in a few moments when the governor signs Senate Bill 1. Let me say this. I echo the comments of my colleagues with respect to the work that has been done and the leadership, most importantly, has been demonstrated. Certainly, I think, as folks know, the past five to six years, there's been significant discussion and debate among the Senate members, in particular, about pension reform and how we're going to address that. And we've had some pretty heated discussions. But at the end of the day, my good friend and colleague, Senator John Blake, who really led the effort for Senate Democrats in this conversation, uh, really laid out what our principles were, our guiding principles. And we think that at this point in time, this legislation addresses that. Making certain that we don't exacerbate the unfunded liability, making certain that we have a reasonable and responsible level of retirement security for our workers, and to make certain that we don't impair the contracts that we have with our current employees, which is some of the three or four principles that we talked about. This legislation meets that. And as my good friend and colleague, Senator Judy Schwank, always says to me and others, we cannot let the perfect be the enemy of the good. This is a good piece of legislation. It's going to help us address what needs to go forward so that we can begin to manage our pension situation across this Commonwealth and allow us to focus on some other measures that we can now take off the back burner and move to the front burner to be part of our conversation as we go forward. But I want to certainly say thank you to Governor Wolf for the work that he's done making certain and demonstrating his leadership to want to work with this issue. But also my colleagues in the Senate, Senator Scarnati and certainly Senator Corman, and Senator Brown, who spent so much time working on this legislation and working closely with our folks in our caucus, Senator Blake, as I mentioned, and Senator Hughes, our appropriations person, as well as our staff folks, and certainly working with Leader Reed and, and Speaker Terzai, and certainly my good friend from Allegheny County, Representative Dermody. This has been a work in progress for a great, great long period of time, and I'm very, very happy to be able to stand here today to support this as we go forward. With that, that is my Pleasure to introduce Representative Frank Dermody, Democratic leader in the State House. Thank you, Jay. And as I the remarks I made said in the remarks I made on the House floor, this pension bill is probably not the bill that the House Democrats would have written if we had written it ourselves. I also mentioned that I don't believe the Republicans would have written this bill if they written it by themselves. However, we chose collaboration instead of confrontation. And we came up with a measured piece of legislation that I think does the job. It would not have taken place without the cooperation of all four caucuses and the governor. And governor, I do want to say thank you for your work on this. Without your engagement and your encouragement, we wouldn't be where we are today. But this measured legislation, I believe, protects retirement security for future workers. It keeps our promise to current employees, it keeps our promise to those retired employees who depend on their pensions today. And we did that working together. Now, as you've heard, passing this pension bill is a big thing. It is a big deal, but it's not the only big thing we need to accomplish this June. So I'm hoping passing this pension bill leads us to do another big thing, that is passing a responsible budget. And uh, Senator Corman, maybe we should all get together at Champs Bar and Grill. Maybe we could put that together there. But it's important, it's, it's very important, incredibly important that we do so. So with that, it is my honor to show you what a bipartisan effort this is, that I have the honor of introducing this, the uh, chairman of the Senate Appropriations uh, Committee, Senator Pat Brown. Thank you, Frank. Um, I, too, wanted to thank uh, Governor Wolf and leadership in all four caucuses, all the members of the Assembly, for their leadership over the past week on behalf of the citizens, taxpayers, workers of the Commonwealth. Um, I also wanted to join Jake Corman and others in thanking the staff uh, who had put so much time and energy on this over a long period of time. People in the trenches looking at endless options, endless fiscal notes, endless actuarial notes, uh, Stacy Connors in my office has been in the trenches on this for, for years now, and without their uh, diligent assistance, we wouldn't be where we're at. So thank all the staff for their hard work. Uh, no doubt, being an accountant, any time you have accountants and economists and actuaries in the room on any issue, it's going to be pretty boring. Um, but no matter how dry it is, that's only matched by how serious it is. Uh, what has been the center of gravity for our conversation, no doubt, has been our $70 billion in debt and growing. Uh, that is a significant number in relation to our assets. 
However, it is important to note, as the Speaker had mentioned, is that we will service that debt to meet our obligations to our participants and our retirees right now pursuant to commonly accepted actuarial standards. Uh, obviously, we can consider other means to do that, but right now that's what we're doing. What's as significant as the debt is what it communicates, what it has communicated to thousands of enterprises that have come before us on this path and thousands that will come after us, something we've never had a solution for, and that is the status quo presents unsustainable risk for our collective mission and the mission of this Commonwealth on behalf of its workers, its taxpayers, and its future generations. The governor and members of this assembly and all the staff understand and had supported this measure because it, that is the primary overwhelming reason to advance pension reform. It's the primary overwhelming reason why the private sector over the last 30 years has moved to a different platform to provide better balance in retirement security on behalf of their workers and their taxpayers. The adoption of Senate, will, Senate Bill 1 reflects what we can do collectively across this building, across state government to address the most significant system, systematic financial challenges that the Commonwealth experiences. And I know it will set an example for future action to put the Commonwealth on a more sustainable path in the future. Thank you very much. Majority Leader, Majority Leader of House, David Reed. Thank you very much, Senator. You know, before I say a few words, I do want to thank a number of folks who really helped get us to this point to about to see pension reform after six long years signed into law. You know, first, I want to give the governor the credit he is due. You know, he stood up at the end of last session and said, I want to make pension reform a priority. I want to separate it from the budget, and I want to get a bill signed into law. And to the governor's credit, he has been a man of his word, and we greatly appreciate his leadership over the last six months in helping us to get here, Governor. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to thank uh, the leadership in the Senate, particularly Senator Corman and Senator Brown, our leadership team uh, led by Speaker Terzai. I also want to thank uh, two of our members who, from a rank and file perspective, have worked very, very hard on pension reform for a number of years, Representative Warren Camp. Representative Mike Tobash, and also our State Government Committee Chairman Daryl Metcalf, who worked very hard to shepherd pension reform through the State Government Committee and through the House floor just last week. We couldn't have been here uh, getting uh, this pension proposal moving forward had we not had cooperation amongst all four caucuses, as several of the speakers had alluded to. Working with Leader Costa and Leader Dermody has been a pleasure throughout this process. And there are a number of staff members, and I want to mention three, who I think really worked very hard to bring this deal to a close within the last couple of weeks. I want to thank Mike Brunell and the governor's staff, Scott Sikorsky and Senator Corman's staff, and Todd Bryziak on my staff, who spent, I think, too many evenings, too many weekends, and too many thoughts for the last six months trying to bring this to a head. So those three individuals in particular deserve a round of applause. You know, there are really two sides of pension reform. Uh, one side is getting out from underneath the unfunded liabilities. And in all honesty, there's only one way to do that. We pay our bill. We pay the bill for commitments that were made decades ago that we, unfortunately, are those who have to pay down those commitments today. And as the speaker alluded to, we've been paying down those commitments on schedule, on time for the last six years. And we're committed to leading the charge to continue to do so until each and every dollar that unfunded liability is paid down. The second side of pension reform is restructuring the deck, restructuring the system so that we make sure that we don't have this problem again in the future. As Leader Corman alluded to, most of the members who voted to change our pension system last week were not part of the problem or were not here when those problems were created years and decades ago. The flip side of that is most of the members who voted to change our pension system last week will not be here to reap the rewards of those changes decades from now. 
because pension reform is not about a short-term budgetary fix. It's about a restructuring of the system that ensures that next time our economy takes a hit from a national perspective, we don't create tens of billions of dollars of debt within that system again. Pension reform, the signing of this bill today by the governor, is about one thing and one thing alone. It's about making sure that those who come after us are not faced with the same difficult decisions that we've been faced with for the last couple of years. So again, I think this is a prime example of what public policy making is, is it supposed to look like. All four caucuses, both parties, and a governor coming together to do the right thing, not just in the short term, but in the long term. So with that, it is now my pleasure to turn the bill over to the governor to officially be signed into law.